Hello, future friends. Thank you for tuning into our show. This is a special episode tonight um, because uh, one of our players couldn't make it for the first few Monday sessions. So we're doing some uh, special sessions for him to uh, get things going. Also, um, I don't know that it's specifically been announced on the show, uh, but Aaron and Adam are father-son. And I think that's one of the cool things about our show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> son. <laughs> and um, so I, I thought it would be interesting to see uh, the, di the dynamic between these two as they play through uh, the special set of um, uh, sessions. Also, uh, tonight, uh, Adam will not be playing Corbin. He no. will instead be playing Craig, Craig! of Craig. Clan Rumbletide, um, the... Dwarf that got made up out of nowhere, basically. He's like a, a Randy Orton RKO. Um, out of nowhere. So if you're a new viewer to our show, um, we invite you to go back and watch the earlier sessions because we are playing an episodic game. Um, you can check us out on YouTube. And if you want to um, know all of our social media, it is included in all of our YouTube videos in the, in the uh, About section. We also have everything on Twitter at MBMRPG um, in the pinned tweet. Um, and if you're also new here, um, we invite you to check out our show on Mondays at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, so we'd also like to thank uh, a few people who've helped us out along the way. Uh, thanks to Axe and Shield for your amazing combat risers. Nice rock. Thanks to uh, Dwarven Forge for your amazing oh. dungeon terrain. They can't. They can't see what you're pointing to. <laughs> <laughs> it's on their screen, right about. It, it, yeah, it is on the okay. screen currently. <laughs> Thank you. You're the one who sees it. Yeah. And lastly, <laughs> thanks to uh, Sirenscape for your amazing soundscapes. Mm -hmm. So Victoria. where we left off for tonight's session is the party just um, returned from Stone Tooth, and they they came back to town and. I, I did a little um, bit of this at the end of that session where Craig sought out uh, Visago and said that he had a message from um, a third party. Uh, and this message was sent via sending. And um, it was a message basically saying to return to Emmerich's hold uh, because uh, the sender needed some help. And there was a special code in there that, mm -hmm. that would allow uh, Visago to know that it was a real thing and not some kind of demon trick. Mm -hmm. um, so... Apples on a horse. That's the code. No, it, um, it don't. I'm pretty sure it was the last three digits of the prison barcode. Yeah, Damn that it. is yeah. canon if you <laughs> watch, is, if you watch two, right. two episodes that's, ago. That's why so he does the tug at the end. Yeah. I'm so infatuated by that curse word. <laughs> so um, we'll pick up right from that moment where... Um, Visago and Craig yeah. are talking together and deciding how to go about um, getting to where they need to be. I mean, do we have a ship? No. Okay. Well, in my experience, I have known how to get to places two ways. Uh, one is to have a ship mm -hmm. and a crew, and the other is to do enough bad things where they send you somewhere. Uh, do you know a third option for traveling? Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I do have to go speak with uh, the mage. Shem Beckley? The mage? Yeah, Shem Oh, is she that one weird old chick in the tower? I have to tell her about the, uh, the book that got lost. The book that got lost? <laughs> what book would that be? <laughs> Uh, she had loaned me a spell book. Oh. Well, I don't know what happened to that. That'll be that'll be interesting. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta make a note here. <laughs> loaned. Sorry, Doug. <laughs> That's how it goes. How it Visa goes. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, write that one down too. That's I don't think anyone's mm -hmm. writing that down. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, buddy. I'm gonna go ahead and write that in. That's a t shirt in three years. Visa goes. <laughs> Uh, was that guy? <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I needed to speak with her anyway. Maybe we could talk to her. I, I know you guys helped clear the, 
the mines. I mean, there were, mm-hmm. there were mines, and there were things in them, and, you know, one of us saved the entire party. So, yeah, no, 100%. We'll uh, go talk to her. Yeah. I'm sure okay. they're thankful. So you guys head to the tower. Mm-hmm. Um, the tower door is closed. And, oh, I just uh, knock. Okay. The door opens. Yeah. And um, it opens with no... Uh, Oh, I remember. This is Philip. Hey, you gotta wait yeah. for him to yeah. say his thing before. Yeah. He so he says, uh, "How can I help you?" <laughs> oh, please announce uh, Craig Glenn Rumbletide, your mistress. Okay. Plus one. He does a nod, but you can't see it because he's unseen. And he Quite begins up the stairs, um, and before he gets to the top, do you guys walk in? Yeah. Oh yeah. You guys 100%. were not announced. No. I'm, on the episode. I'm I'm walking in already and. <laughs> You know, I, I think he's doing the same thing he did last time he was here, where he's just, like, running through and grabbing books. Mm-hmm. And then he goes to read it, and it's another thing about, like, demon heritage. He's like, fucking, I hate this place so much. <laughs> and he puts it back, but not where it's supposed to be. Of course not. <laughs> of course not. Um, so you guys walk upstairs, goes. and um, do you remember who was upstairs? It was Corbin and just Xenos, right? Just those two. So they're in the middle of a conversation, um, it appears that as though the conversation is concluding about um, looking at some books uh, downstairs. And um, Chen Buckler says, I would be happy to show you uh, downstairs, but it looks like we have some guests. Why don't you um, go downstairs and start taking a look? And then if you need help finding something, I will be happy to help you. And so she uh, takes a seat behind her desk again. And she said, and Seasage Lonjogger is also there because mm. he was there. And he was, uh, as the two of them leave, um, the sea sage says, it's very important that I get back to my um, my home on Emmerich's Hold. And it is important to the realm because of the news that those two brought us. Um, and Does that guy always sleep in gutters? Every time, yeah, actually. It's really helpful when you're trying to find him. Why is he with that child? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. But uh, listen, this, if I can say one thing, and this is important, don't trust that child with any sort of like position or rank. He gets It goes to his head so fast. And uh, so, many wings. so many winks. I'm sorry. It's going to happen. So many <laughs> so, There's no one to rein me in. Um, she says, <clears throat> um, did you have... Something you guys needed? Yeah, I had some bad news oh. from the heroes that liberated the brewery. Okay. Um, the spell book you had loaned out to the clan. Looks like the goblins stole it. Oh, no. Well, yeah. I'm sure that the the heroes were, who were just here could help help retrieve it. You know, they hadn't They're, mentioned anything about it. Uh, so oh, no. I don't think they should. The, there they was a... Anything. That barracks was full of goblins. I mean, the, the remains that were there after they went through were, mm-hmm. it was pretty bad. Yeah. And at this point, Vizago's like on a chair somewhere leaning up to grab another book. And he's like, and a dragon. They said something about a dragon. Um, I think Nightscale was its name. Yeah, big <laughs> dragon. You kind see, of she dick. kind of makes some incantation, <laughs> and the book that you just toss casually on the shelf goes back up to where it needed to go. I was reading that. You it just was, set it on the table. You, well, I like to pick up and read as I go. Oh, I okay. thought you put it on the floor. I, I, to be honest, I wasn't really. That thinking. it's free, right? Yeah. If it's on the floor, it's free. Floor books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So um, she says, okay, well, that's unfortunate. Um, it was one of the lesser spell books that are, that are here, but, you know, value is value. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe I'll talk to uh, Xenos again about that. Yeah, just whatever you do, don't give him a rank or something because the guy's gotcha. crazy about it. Yeah, so. You got it. Yeah. Um, anything else? Uh, well, we need to get somewhere. And I'm told there's an option of getting places which doesn't involve chains or boats. Um, yeah, there is. I can. Uh, where do you need to go? 
and I say the location, although I did not catch it on your Im- I will say. Immerk's Hold is <laughs> where you strangely the same place the sea sage is from. Sage, oh. from. So she says, well, it's convenient for you that, um, that I am already going to be uh, sending the sea sage there, and I, if you give me a few moments, I can open a, a teleportation circle. Um, Emmerich's Hold is one of the more uh, wealthy towns in, in the Pirate Islands, so um, they actually do have a teleportation circle to there, and I'll send you on your way. Cool. I'm always down to hitch a free ride. Um, this is out of character for a bit. Uh, as someone okay. who spent some time in the Pirate Islands in their past, uh-huh. what would I know about Emmerich's Hold? So Emmerich's Hold uh, is named after Captain Emmerich, which is, or I might be saying that wrong. It's I-M-M-U-R-K. Emmerich, I probably. Um, it is named after him. He mm-hmm. was, a thousand years ago, he was the first fi- pirate captain of this area. Okay. It is now the seat of power for the pirate captains that kind of rule the entire uh, area. It is a population of about 5,000, which doesn't seem that big, but I think is probably bigger than what I think it is. Um, and it is kind of the hub of everything here. There are several other villages that are of decent size, but this is probably, if there was a capital, this would be it. Okay, cool. And this is kind of where like the, the head of the Republic kind of gets together kind yes. of thing? Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. This is where the pirate captains meet. Awesome. Um, so she she says she's willing to send you there if you want. Well, then, You've probably been there before, honestly. Yeah, I probably, I probably would have back there back when I was on the Hellish Wind a few times. Yeah. I imagine that we were probably there. That's what I was thinking. So that's why I wanted to bring it up in case there was like a moment where I'm like, what is this new thing? <laughs> capital of the islands I've lived a lot of my life on. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so um, is there anything else you would like to talk with, about with Shen Buckler before um, she sends you on? I the will way? say... Um, how you're a person of note on this island yes how much information do you say probably goes your way around here um well there's a council of elders here that that deals with most things on uh in squall um and and she is on it so Mm -hmm. she says i'm i'm on it i typically will discuss matters of the day with any of the other elders so there is one question i have before we go which is have you heard word on the hellish wind or the former captain terror um i will make a history check for her and she rolled a five so Mm. she does not know of the hellish wind no great um so unfortunately no all right if would you do me a favor and Uh if i'm in this town again and you You've heard something. Well, I would hope you would make it back here because I need to find out what you know about other things. Oh, I will definitely check in with you. But I think it was the Ember Flame. Yeah, the Ember, whatever, whatever high pompous bullshit. Aren't you a bard? Yeah, (laughs) sort of. Okay. I don't think he's that kind of bard. Not, (laughs) not the bard that knows knowledge and, and shares it. No, it's it's the kind of bard that knows knowledge and maybe trades it for other knowledge, oh, okay. which he will actually I, say. <laughs> I, yeah, I forgot. I, yeah. That was a DM, my bad. Yeah. Uh, I forgot which college you went to. Yeah. Um, okay. So she um, she says, absolutely, I can keep an eye out. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll, I'll share knowledge and hopefully you'll share knowledge as well. Fantastic. That's the kind of deals I like to make. Uh, so I guess we got this teleportation thing to go? Yeah. Yeah. What time do you think we'll be ready to do that? Um, it would take me a few minutes to cast the spell. Magic is amazing. He yes. says to the clear wizard. <laughs> Why? Do magic. So far, all I've known is that lets you turn simple insults into hurtful things. Which, <laughs> I mean, I'll admit, is a favorite trick of mine. Yeah. Hurtful words are hurtful. For hurtful. So she, um, she takes you up to the next story up. Um, which is not a place that anyone in the party has been to yet. Mm-hmm. And this is basically um, a magically encanted area for spells. Um, in case things go wrong, she can. it, it has certain wards against um, magic 
spreading out of control. So um, as you go upstairs, you notice that um, there are, this is a, still a stone, uh, stone tower with a giant circle in the middle. Um, Aaron, are you trained in Arcana? I am trained in Arcana. Okay. Let me go ahead and make that uh, check. You don't Ooh, that's pretty good. Oh, okay. Going to be 22. Okay. So you know that this could be function as a teleportation circle. You would know this automatically. Um, but it could also function as like a circle of binding or something like that that she could use if she ever needed to summon a demon and wanted to bind it in the, in the circle. So. Which I think would mean there's a teensy bit of. <laughs> there's a little in. pain yeah, as you walk little, through yeah. the barrier of the circle. A little tingle. A little tingle. Uh, um, so she says, um, walk into the circle. I will cast a spell. And it is loud when she casts the spell. Before um, she casts the spell, there is one other thing I was going to tell her right before she casts, which is... Um, Mid-cast. If I don't make it back till Rennie gets my share and the debt Corbin owes me. Okay. Okay. And he steps in and goes... <laughs> <laughs> so she casts the spell. Um, there are no mishaps. And you guys uh, disappear from this area. Um, and you reappear on uh, in a somewhat nondescript building. Um, and it looks like a giant warehouse. But there is another circle on this side. Um, and there, there are some people that are working here that seem seem like they weren't necessarily expecting you, but definitely are not shocked because they this is a teleportation circle. And they're they're probably expecting the siege. Um well, I mean eventually, but uh, but he traveled by sea the first time, mm. so they kind of assumed that he would be traveling by sea for the rest of it. So, he steps through and then um, you guys step through and um, they look up for a second and then look at you specifically cuz you're a tiefling. Um, and uh, then go about their business. Uh, so I'll, I'll go over to uh, Craig and I'll go, did uh, they even tell you where we were supposed to meet him here at all? Oh, yeah. Where are we going? Yeah. Oh. oh. Huh, this way? Yeah. Okay. Um, just a heads up. Last time I met him, um, we weren't very open about where we were meeting or anything, so just let me know if there's someone I should be avoiding. And he kind of starts eyeing the room around him because now he's in full alert. <laughs> <laughs> um, they didn't tell me to have you avoid anyone. Good to know. Good to know. Hello. Just so you know, David did not tell you where to, to meet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I lie. Oh, okay. So. Um, Insubordinate. <laughs> Churlish. So you... You guys, uh, you and Thaven, though, have talked of Immerk's Hold when you, when you guys were in prison together. Okay. Um, and he mentioned uh, three different uh, taverns. Um, the tavern, uh, the Sleeping Servant, mm -hmm. Serpent, rather, sorry, mm -hmm. Sleeping Serpent, the Fair Wind, and the Powder Keg. Oh, okay. Um, and you know from being here before that those are various... Uh, levels of quality mm -hmm. uh, of taverns and which and, one's the highest quality one? Uh, well, so there's question about that. Uh -huh. The Sleeping Serpent is probably the nicest one. Mm -hmm. um, it is also a gambling hall, mm -hmm. um, and so the Fair Wind is probably the nicest, um, nicest like tavern. Tavern the the uh, Sleeping Serpent is kind of where the tourists and the... Um, and so, Fazago will go, if I was a pompous elf, I would be at the Fairwind? Probably the Fairwind. And I imagine it's a Andy Dufresne-esque moment of go to the pear tree kind of moment. And he's like remembering the story he heard once, and he's like, oh, fucking that's where he is. All right, well, we're going to the Fairwind Tavern then. Okay. So, you head off to the Fairwind Tavern. Um, and, um, when you step out of the building, it's on the docks. Um, and the reason that it looked like a warehouse is it was a warehouse. Um, 
and there is a number of uh, it's it's a bustling city of five thousand, uh, <laughs> and it um, you can start making your way there. Um, there are merchants hawking their wares on every street corner. There are um, taverns here and there, um, and there are uh, boarding houses for sailors. As you're walking through the the docks district, there's many boarding houses for. For sailors as we're stuff. walking through the crowds, can I do an investigation check to try and pick up any like whispers? Like if some, people are telling a lot of different stories that are on everybody's minds, can I try and pick them up? Sure, absolutely. That is going to be a 19. Okay. So you pick up a story um, that two people are talking about um, that's talking about the uh, Cult of the Dragon. Um, mm -hmm. And their recent activity along the Sword Coast. Now, the Sword Coast is a ways away from here, but um, there apparently there's several cultists of the dragon that are, uh, are sects that are raiding um, villages along the Sword Coast, which mm -hmm. is semi-big yeah. news. Oh. Especially when we weren't the only ones. Yeah, that doesn't bode well with what other things we learned. But then again, not my problem. And he keeps on going through the Okay. Test. Well, I mean, technically, it's all of our problems. And we all live in this area. And yeah. you know, we're all being targeted. I can get out of here if I need to. You just had to borrow a teleportation circle to get here. And I got here just fine. <laughs> my philosophy with life is as long as you keep failing your way upwards, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know Featherfall? <laughs> what? Oh. No, no. <laughs> so, like um, so you're making your way to the Fairwind. Um, uh, the Fairwind is a is a nice tavern um, with an with an inn attached. Um, it is it has a dining area that um, has a large ring in the middle of it um, mm -hmm. that is recessed into the floor, um, and um, a serving girl comes up to you and says, are you here for dinner? Uh, yeah, we're here for yes. dinner. Okay. Do you got a nice table? Yeah. Do you want a seat by the ring or do you want a seat away from the ring? Do you want noisy or quiet? Quiet. Okay. So she leads you away from the ring um, to a corner booth. Mm -hmm. um, are you prepared to... So there are private booths mm -hmm. um, that do have a... a Shade that they can pull. Now those I have an additional cost. Okay. Private booth's fine with me. All right. So she, uh, there's a brief exchange there. She mm -hmm. explains that she ha has uh, has you take a seat, and um, she says uh, tonight's specialty is fried terror bird, um, and uh, we also have fresh fish. <laughs> um, it seems like they're joke here. Can mm -hmm. I take your order? Yeah. Um, what kind of what kind of alcohol do you guys have here? What's your listing? Uh, we have Rumble Tide Ale. Yeah, we have yeah. Fine Elven Wine. Mm -hmm. um, we have a few other selections of. We have a. What's the uh, finest? You have Fine Elven Wine. You said. Yeah, Fine Elven Wine. Absolutely. Man, uh, you know I always like to try, but I find myself hard to be a connoisseur. Okay. Now, just between you and me, he'll lean in like he's embarrassed to ask. He's okay. like. Do you know anyone who ordered any recently? Uh, I like to ask people, but I, I don't want to be out in the open. I don't know what I'm doing because I'm trying to look nice. It's a big business exchange. Oh, I see what you're doing. <laughs> what? No, I don't know what you're doing. No, keep doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, she says, um, well, the last person that ordered this uh, was an elf. Oh. Um, and he must know what he's doing. Yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I assume he... He did. Yeah. I mean, he ordered the finest of Elven wine oh. when he was in here. Can I, can they point him out to me so I can ask him? She looks around and she says, she, "I don't, I don't see him right now." Mm. Right. You would notice him. He yeah. has, he has this orange <laughs> scarf that he wears. Oh. It stands out. Imagine that. Imagine that. All right. Well then, hold on. I gotta make another note. <laughs> Amalgam. Yeah. Just, uh, um, 
She says, but I can I can bring you a sample if you'd like. Yeah, go ahead and bring me a sample. That'd okay. be great. And the bird? The terror bird? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, how many how many pieces do you want? How big are they? Well, terror bird is like um, you would know terror bird is like an ostrich. Well, right, but it's I like mean, a chocobo. Are, are they slicing like turkey slices or are they bringing like a they're bringing it like fried chicken is what I was imagining. Bring me a leg. Okay. And uh, two rumble tied ales. Yeah. Okay. And then I flash my oh. rumble tied clan badge and I'm like, I expect quality. Absolutely. No. I, and as she's about to go away, I'll, I'll grab her and be like, and a whiskey for when he's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> it's never a bad time to conduct business. <laughs> no. And he sets his pack down and starts pulling out like a series of little beakers and like a little mallet and a cup and stuff like that. It's just... And then he pulls out a weasel, <laughs> sets it down. It's Ralph. It's his familiar. <laughs> and it immediately goes to you and goes, <laughs> Which I think it's great because of Mizako. Like, what he should be doing is like, uh, but instead he's like, <laughs> you too! <laughs> it's a celestial weasel. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ralph, behave. You, nice. Yeah, you listen to Tonight, me. You, Mizako, behave! Hairy dwarf. That's me. I know, I think that's, that's a compliment, right? No. I can't understand anything you guys say, to be honest. That's <laughs> So a short time later, she comes back with uh, your drinks, mm -hmm. and um, she says, I've put in your order. I'll bring it out as soon as um, it's there. Um, if you're interested, um, the fights start around um, sundown. The, um, the fights? The ring. Yeah, the, the ring. ring. Mm -hmm. uh, challengers come here to fight. Do you, do you have any good challengers going on right now? Uh, you know, from time to time. There's there's a few. Um, mostly it's uh, sailors um, trying to see who's who's the best in a non-lethal way. Um, occasionally there has been a, a pirate captain duel here Ooh. Uh, because pi pirate captains are not supposed to fight in Immerk's hold. Um, and you know we we do have a. A pretty decent selection of regulars that like to test their strength. Hmm. Any local favorites? Um, Strong Jaw um, is is a a favorite. He's a half orc. Hmm. All right. Well, that sounds fun. Oh, that sounds more like a Goliath name. Yeah, a little bit. Like a big one though. Yeah. Like a big, impressive one. Yeah. Very impressive. Yeah. Are you Strangely, with facial hair. Yeah, like he'd be like the only one. So, anyways, <laughs> he gets her dicks. <laughs> Brad Mizako will like peek up at that, and he's like, "Well, I don't know if we're gonna find Haven today, but I'm gonna make some money. So let's enjoy this. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Take a beaker, scoop some of the ale. Uh huh. And I set it down. I do another one. Okay. Another one. And I take the mallet and I swirl. Mm hmm. I'm looking at it. Is it is it a glass or a tankard? Uh, it would probably be a tankard. Oh. She brought him a glass though, because he's got it. You it, ordered Elven ale. So. Hold, hold on, and he'll down it and then hand you the oh, glass. Oh no, it's dirty now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, it's fine. I can. Do you have prestidigitation? I do. You can clean that glass right yes, up. That's true. There you go. <laughs> oh god, I hate this stuff. Honestly, some, but I thought that would. Bring I'll put some out. ale in there. <laughs> And then I'll swirl it. Mm -hmm. and I'll wait for the sediment to start. And mm -hmm. um, it is not as pure as you're used to because you are used to on in the brewery type uh, purity when it comes to that. Um, but it is it is very good. So uh, I do have a brewer's kit. So he's okay. checking like carbonation levels and. Okay. And like acceptable foam, making sure. sure that they aren't watering it down too no, much. No, they're not watering. It down. When she comes back, I'll tell her that they need to rotate their casks half a turn. She will. She will thank their, you for that. Their sediment is off. So I was gonna say like this, and he's like, "How do I keep making meeting people who make drinking not fun?" <laughs> it seems impossible. Oh, I'm not gonna drink it. Fair enough. <clears throat> I just wanted to check it. 
So um, she asks if you enjoyed your Elven Ale. It's, so what it tastes like. Yeah. It tastes like the sweetest... Uh, it's alcoholic. You can tell that it's alcoholic, yeah. but the sweetness steals any alcohol taste at all. Yeah. It's like if somebody took uh, you know, the hibiscus candies, mm-hmm. but then liquefied it and put it in Everclear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or... I- if someone were to take like vodka, and then they would put Skittles into it, oh, well, that's yeah. totally different. Totally different. Totally different. Uh-huh. Who would do that? <laughs> Nobody anymore. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Only crazy people would do no. that. Clearly. You know the thing about uh, alcoholic drinks is you want them super sweet because mm. um, that, that helps with your hangover. Mm. Mm, totally. Helps you get one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Hundred um, uh, percent. I'll, I'll tell her. I'll be like, it was good for making an impression. But please just keep. Okay. I don't she, think he cares anymore. She <clears throat> says we have a fine vintage of whiskey. Uh, it's, uh, Give me brewed, the cheapest. Brewed by a gnome. Cheapest shit you got. Uh, we got one. So oh. it's also the most expensive that we have. Oh my god. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is why I don't normally hang out. Also, with these Aaron, um, before we get too far into this, yeah. um, you guys left before the treasure was distributed. <laughs> no, I I remember <laughs> hearing there were some words uh, tossed out in chat. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's part of the reason why he told he told her that if they come back and he doesn't come back to give Rand his share. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, that's his so, backup plan. So she heads off. Um, a short while later, um, she brings um, a, uh, a like a platter of food because Terra Bird is enormous, and she's like, "I think you ordered a leg," and in Flintstone style, sets a giant ostrich leg in front of you. Oh, wait. Oh my god. <laughs> you had to live with me doing this yeah. in real life. Yeah. <laughs> Took the beard, put it in the chair. And what did you have, Aaron? The dwarfiest dwarf. I think he had the same thing, but he's like, small. Oh, whatever. Okay. Like, he has, she, like, she he brings has a wing. A comedically you. smaller sized version of what he's eating. Sure. Yeah. I'll put some meat down. She's so like, <laughs> this, this terror bird was killed right when it was born. So it's like the. <laughs> It's the veal of terror bird. Well, it's also the size of a chicken. Oh, good. <laughs> but oh, like but it it's met super an accident, tender. they're like, "Well, I mean, super tender. yeah, it works." <laughs> um, Aren't you gonna be hungry later? No, because I'm not a dwarf, which I still cannot understand. Your kind fascinates me. That's fair. We're beautiful and bearded. Even your women. If you're lucky. <laughs> So, um, nope. <laughs> you just, I'm assuming you just drink and eat? Oh, yeah, until fighting starts happening, and then I'm okay. going to make my way over to the ring. Okay, so probably about an hour before sundown, the, the place starts to fill up. Um, there are a number of, uh, I would say a mix of individuals. Um, it, this is not the nicest place in town, but as far as pirate taverns go it is fairly nice it is yeah. nice enough to attract the high level clientele while still Serving getting lower yeah, yeah still getting the pirates um it is the red robin of <laughs> <laughs> all right of fair enough pirate taverns um and by by the way red robin if you're watching i will gladly accept gift cards so um it's <laughs> <laughs> so not a great sponsor deal, Reed, but we can work on it. I'm, yeah, we, uh, we have yeah, okay. options. Okay. Um, so um, there is a uh, orc, there a half orc that comes in. His other half is orc, so um, mm-hmm. he, technically it's true. Um, and he comes in and he looks. Um, he one, he's tremendously fat. But you can see his shoulders and his arms. He is, uh, he's also big boned. Mm. Um, and it looks like he could um, take a punch and give a punch. Mm. Um, so you, you think that he's probably strong, John. Yeah. Um, uh, if I, the other contestants, is there any that look promising but probably get kind of beat out most of the time? Um, there is. So. Of the people that look like they're interested in, there's people signing up on the list mm-hmm. to fight. Um, there is a very skinny adolescent 
human. Um, and there is a um, probably your average sailor on a ship that have signed up so far. Mm. Um, so. All right. Um, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and do, I think it would probably be an investigation to try and get a read of the crowd and see if they have. So I'm guessing Strongjaw is the favorite. Mm -hmm. But I want to confirm whether he's the favorite and then uh, kind of the where everyone thinks everyone's at for betting purposes. Okay. Um, I'm going to try and run the market. Essentially. Sure. sure. Uh, so that would be a. That's pretty good. This would be an investigation. Uh, 21. 21. Okay. So, yeah, by far, Strong Jaw is the favorite. Mm -hmm. um, and the betting is actually so you have to place a bet, a significant bet on Strong Jaw to win money mm -hmm. back. Um, the next in line would be um, the. The pirate, yeah, and then last um, is going to be the adolescent boy. Okay, um, can I get to the adolescent boy to talk to him? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, so I'm it's, gonna roll it's up. open. I'm gonna roll up and be like, "How do you think your chances are today?" He says he feels pretty confident. Feels pretty confident. Yeah. We're, we're, we're heavy, and this is not me at it. This is Vizaga. We're, <laughs> we're heavy trained. Um, he says that he trained at the Temple of the Four Winds. And immediately he stopped chuckling and goes, oh, we're going <laughs> to do things tonight. <laughs> and I'll go up and I'll be like, I'll put a hand on his shoulder. I'll be like, I believe in you tonight, man. You got this. I know Thanks. you got this. Thanks. And then as soon as he like starts going away, he's going to turn around and find the book and goes, 10 gold on that kid. Okay. Uh, and he says, uh, name is Jeffru, by the way. Jeffru? Jeffru. Jeffru, 10 gold on Jeffru. Can you spend money on the wispy kid? Yeah. He's going he's gonna to take it tonight. I'll put 20 on the kid. Okay. Um, it is going to pay, um, we'll say 10 to 1. Cool. So, um, just so you know, Mm -hmm. Before things get started, um, they will notice if you cast stuff. So if you want to prepare things in advance and maybe do it on the sly, uh, um, I'd let I'd let you make a sleight of hand or a, <coughs> um, a stealth check to yeah. to do that. So um, I was going to do a stealth check for it. Um, sure. So the two things that I'll probably be trying to switch out. And I'll tell you, kind of, one, I'm going to be trying to, I'm just going to be cheering Jeff Rue. What uh -huh. I'm really doing is I'm giving him inspiration. Okay. And then the other thing I'm going to do is whenever the other fighter's out, I'm going to start bad-mouthing him and I want to do Vicious Mothery. Oh, for, for Strong Jaw? Yeah, for, yeah, whoever he's fighting at okay. the moment. All um, right. So I'll go so ahead. So you're his hype man? I'm his, I'm disguising myself as a hype man, but using it to cast bard spells. Okay. Um... Give me a second to switch to. I think that's. No. Cool. <laughs> oh, and they really need to hire a new card. I mean, he's barely starting out. <laughs> you could tell. He's this lying. is the CD tavern. <laughs> um. The one thing I wish um, Sirenscape did is group. Mm -hmm. Like, all of the taverns could be grouped together. Yeah. And it would make it easier. Well, you can't make your own soundboard. That's true. You can. And if I had the time to do that, I definitely would. Um, all right. So I'm just going to go ahead and... Okay. So. So that stealth, by the way, if you're curious, is. Mm -hmm. 17. Okay. Um, so the first fight um, is uh, Jeff Rue versus mm -hmm. the Sailor. Yeah. Uh, because it's kind of. Um, so you're going to. Now, how many. Um, 
how many inspirations and stuff like that do so you have? So I have uh, five inspirations, and okay. I have unlimited Vicious Mockery, just a cantrip I can cast. Okay. Um, so I'll probably try to throw one, two if the fight drags out on this fight, because I want to try and save three for the oh, strong draw for fight. For the strong draw fight, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Vicious Mockery just... If there's ever a time where it looks like he's winding up for his big one, I'm just be like, you can't fight worth shit! And I'm not even really going for the damage, I'm mostly going for the disadvantage on the attack. Okay. So I'm, uh, what was that, what's that one movie where they're playing the, the sports ball game, and like the whole thing, their whole thing is that they just distract pitchers before they're about to throw? Basketball? Basketball. I'm doing basketball. Mm -hmm. That's a reference. No one was expecting. That is a reference that <laughs> it's not so common lately. But I do like basketball quite a bit. Yeah. Um, okay, so I will. How about this? Um, you can roll for Jeffrey, mm -hmm. and I will roll for uh, the other guy. Okay, sounds good. And um, they'll do an announcement, and I have to go back to my list because I totally had all of this prepared. Um, okay. So, um, a bartender that, that was working in the back when you first showed up comes mm -hmm. out and he says, okay, first up, uh, Horn versus, what was your name again? He says, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Um, and he says, okay, uh, Horn versus Jeffrey, place your bets. Um, and people start betting like mm -hmm. crazy. I'm assuming you're betting for Jeffrey to oh, win yeah. not the yeah. entire thing. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, um, so immediately Jeffrey goes into like, <laughs> like he knows what he's doing, martial arts style defense. Um, and Horn is just like, okay. Yeah. So he winds up. He goes to punch. Uh, he does so at disadvantage mm -hmm. because. Uh, okay. So uh, first hit. First attack yeah. hits him for um, a little bit. Yeah. He deflects most of it. Yeah. Uh, and then it's Jeffrey's turn. All right. So I rolled a nine. Okay. And um, he's going to have a, a five. He's going to have a plus five for his yeah. attack? Yeah. So okay. 14. 14? Yeah. Uh, we'll so, let that roll for now and see what, what if that hits. So that actually hits. Yeah. Um, and you, uh, his strength, or well, I forget how monks, if they add their wisdom to their damage or if it's just strength. Don't you have a player's handbook? I don't have a player's handbook here. I put it at the end of the table. Um, so he hits him. Yeah. It's a solid hit. And then um, he's kind of pushed back a little bit. Um, he then goes back to attack him to again. Which Val leans in and goes, Oh, you're getting beat up by a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you viciously mocking yeah, him? Yeah, I am. Okay. So um, he he got a five plus plus his strength modifier. So he does not hit. And how much does your vicious mockery do? Uh, well, let's see here. Uh, just one. Just one. Like ah, oh, god, he's right. Okay, I'm messing up. Okay, so now <laughs> it's uh, now it's Jeffrey's turn. Ooh, not as good. That's a five. So plus five would be ten. I'm gonna go ahead and use an inspiration to get at up. first level. Uh huh. That monk should be getting, uh, he gets a bonus action for an extra unarmed strike when he does his attack action. Okay. And he can use his dex instead of his strength for attack and damage rolls. Okay. So that would be, um, the first attack would be uh, some four damage, and then you said how much was the... Was that Vicious Mockery? Yeah. Which oh, is actually, no, because he gets the unarmed, he has unarmed strike, so he can actually do unarmed damage. It's not just one. It's a D4. Mm -hmm. So roll your D4. Okay. A uh, four. Okay. Oh, wow. So the yeah. first hit is eight damage, <laughs> yeah. and your Vicious Mockery was what? One damage. One damage. Okay, yeah. so he's taking nine damage. Uh -huh. He's looking bad <laughs> at this point. And his AC is his is 10 plus his dex plus his whiz. I know. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. Um, so, okay, it's your turn. Okay. And now, if you want to spend a bonus action, yeah. you can do a flurry. But I would think that Jeffrey no, might want to save, that. save it. He's yeah. Gonna save what he's got. Um, so I did roll the inspiration for that last attack because it okay. was kind of low. So it's going to end up, he gets a plus five, right? Uh, yes. So it's going to be 15 total now. Okay, that hits again. Cool. 
uh, two. Okay. Uh, horn goes down. And, yeah! and the crowd is fairly shocked by this turn of events. <laughs> yeah. Because um, nobody was betting on the uh, skinny young lad. Almost nobody was. Almost nobody. Almost. So, um, yeah, he, he is, he, he is uh, declared the winner. Yeah. And next up is um, the fight with Strongjaw. And because I do have a DMG, or a uh, monster manual here, I can use what Strongjaw has. Hey. Um, so, okay. So, the next next up, they, they go to round two, mm -hmm. and they say Strongjaw versus Jeffrew. And uh, Strongjaw gets a rousing uh, uh, set of cheers. And Jeffrew gets some booze, yeah. but but mostly cheers. Yeah. Um, There's probably some people that maybe don't like the way that last one ended. I'm sure. Uh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So in this fight, um, we'll we'll roll for initiative to see who All goes right. first. Well, he got a 17 on the die. Oh, he goes Ooh. first. So, um, so Strongjaw is uh, kind of sizing them up. They're circling a little bit. Um, and what does Jeffrey do? So I think Jeffrey like goes in like he's in fighter stance, and then he sees Strongjaw size him up, and he kind of does that thing where he just goes this, like he kind of starts leaning back like this, and then he's gonna come in and do it an attack. Like he's gonna come here and uh -huh. then wound his fist like this to hit him. Okay. So he's going drunken now. Oh That's yeah. Yeah. Uh, that would be an eleven plus five. That's sixteen to hit. Oh, that hits. That's uh, three on the damage roll. Okay. And um, then who's going to use that bonus action? Okay. Go in for another one. So I think he connects and, go, and then he comes in with the uppercut from the other hand. Okay. Or maybe like a, a loping like this. Yeah. And he clips him and he's like, oh, and then he snaps his head. Oh, forward. that's yeah, what, yeah. Nice. So he comes and he like snaps his head to so get him. You said three on the die? Yeah, three on the die. So that is going to be higher than that. So he would have had. It'd be six total. Yeah. And the second attack comes through. Uh, that's going to be nine, uh, 14 to hit. Uh, that is still going to hit. Awesome. And that one is a two on the die. Okay, so five more. Uh, all right. So first round um, is not going so great. Um, strong guy rages. Because um, yeah. well, he's not a he's not a barbarian. He's a berserker. Yeah. Um, so he doesn't get the half damage, but he does get to uh, make a reckless attack. Yeah. Um, so he, Ooh. instead yeah. of taking disadvantage, because I'm assuming Jeffrew is going to go ahead and do, um, are you looking at Monk again? He's level three. Okay. Um, well, when you said the name of the school, I figured, because that means he's declared he's, yeah. his path. Uh, well, I just said that he went to that school. I didn't say that he yeah. declared. And yet here we are at level three. Here we are at level three. <laughs> Um, that may not even be an uh, actual path in there, I don't yes. know. Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, he rages, and he's going to recklessly attack, which means... He's he... going to get death advantage anyways. Yeah. Well, he's going to get... He's going to... The advantage and disadvantage cancel each other out. Yeah. So, he rolled a 19, so Ooh, that's definitely going to hit Jeffrew. Um, and his strength bonus is plus three, so he does four damage. Cool. Um... And we'll say Jeffrew. How many hit points do you have? How many do I have? Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at a 23. Okay. We'll give Jeffrew 30 hit points. Cool. Sounds okay. To me. So he does four. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So it's your turn. Here you go. All right. Comes in. Winding back from the attack. Mm -hmm. Comes back and kind of does like to the middle of. So he goes back like you get hit. And then he kind of stumbles forward, and when he stumbles forward, he's going to go down into a tackle pose and come in for body shots. Okay. Uh, and that is a 17 on the die, that's so gonna that's hit? definitely going to hit. Yeah? Are you doing two attacks? Or oh, yeah. One? Okay. Well, so actually, if you spend a key point, you can do three. Oh, well, you know what? Let's spend a key point, because he hasn't used anything yet. Okay. All right, so that's two on the die for the first attack. Okay. And then the second attack... Uh, that's a three, but I'm I'm gonna have him use one of the inspirations. Okay. So that would make it a thirteen. 
That hits. Oh, oh uh, by the way, when he attacked recklessly, you yeah. get advantage on these attacks. Oh, fuck yeah. So yeah. why don't you roll again, because you need a crit fish. Yeah. Okay, he didn't crit on the first one, and the second one he also didn't Okay. Crit. Okay. But for that second attack, he's going to do two more on the die. And then the third hit. Oh, nat 20. Mm, okay. I think, we, I think he's going to take the nat 20. All right. Um... So we'll do two D4s. Yep. So that's one. Well, of course. Uh, so that's two ones. That's a two. <laughs> of course. So five more damage. Yeah. Uh, all right. So he um, he's messed up because yeah. uh, he's hit he's hit Jeffrey once. Yeah. And been hit like a do half dozen times it's at this point. Of blows. Yeah. So that last one, I imagine he like went in for the intent and he goes for the body shot, uh -huh. and then he kind of just finds a rhythm. He goes. And the last one's a palm strike right in the middle and knocks him back. Clipping right up under the sternum, maybe yeah. knocking some wind oh, down. Oh, just him. a little bit. And then, like, he goes back to this and he just... So, um, because Jeffrew bit. is performing as well as he is, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and have um, uh, Strongjaw make a constitution saving throw Ooh. to not <laughs> be uh, stunned. And he fails big time. Oh, no. So it is now Jeffrew's turn again. Oh, no. All right. So Jeffrey's, and he's looking pretty bad, right? Uh, he's looking okay. He's looking okay, but, but he's, he's taking it. a lot of okay. damage. Um, so just so you know, uh, attacks against this creature have advantage. Okay. So he didn't recklessly attack, but you still get still advantage. Still get advantage. Um, and he is considered incapacitated. Can't move, can't speak. Um, only faltering sentences and fails automatically fails dexterity and strength checks. Does uh, Monk have any like trip moves or anything, right? Uh, no, I think so. Not this, path. not this path? Okay, cool. All right, he's just going to go in for a full flurry. He could set him on fire, but yeah. he's not going to do that, I don't think. Oh, that's a 19, and just to see if it's 20. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Die down. Die down. Die down. Okay, so he'll take the 19 for the first one. Okay. Second one, a 16, and a 15. He'll take the 16. Third one. Eight and a fifteen. He'll take the fifteen. For okay, the they all one. three hit. Four damage. Four on the die. Two on the die, and one on the die. Okay, so seven, uh, twelve, and then four more. Sixteen damage. Okay, yeah. so he he is messed up at this point. Um, you have opened. Uh, Jeffrey has opened up several. Uh, he. He's got a Ric Flair mask at this yeah. point. Oh, Full yeah. on blood down the yeah. face. Um, and he is mad. He is mad. So he's going to go ahead and uh, do a reckless attack again. Mm -hmm. Let me just see if he has... No, he does not have... Um, he does not have multi-attack, so he's just going to swing. Uh, he did get a natural 20. Um, actually, he got two natural 20s. Wow, all right, yeah. I guess attack. he deserves that one. Then. So, yeah. in that case, I am going to let him roll yeah. um, for that. So that is a uh, one and a four. So five plus his strength modifier of three is eight damage to okay. Jeffrew. So he's taken 11 so far. Yeah, so Jeffrew's not... He's not doing great, but, but he's doing a lot better than yeah. uh, than strong guys. Okay, yeah. so um, Jeffrew's turn again. How much key does Jeffrew probably have? He's just two points. Uh, he, I think they're probably it's based off their wisdom score. I think it's their wisdom modifier. So, that would make sense. I don't know. I've never played a monk. I oh, I want to, but I haven't played one yet. I only want to play it just for bar fights, though. <laughs> <laughs> He has three key points. Okay, so he's got okay. one more. So he's got one more. I uh, mean, you still have, he reckless, so you yeah. still have, a, still you have advantage. advantage. The, you might yeah. as well I'm gonna, He's going to use it on this one because he's got advantage on these three, so. Okay. Uh, 17 and a 10. He'll take the 17 for the first one. Three and a 17. He'll take a 17 for the second one. Okay. So Four two hits. and a six for the other one. Um, and he has six. Would that be eleven to hit? Yeah, uh, that's but, not gonna hit. Well, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna use that other inspiration on him. Okay. So add four more to that. So that's fifteen. That will help. Yeah. Okay. So roll your damage. Three. Three. 
14. One. And then four more is uh, is 18 damage. Okay. So at this point, yeah. they're still fighting. Yeah. Um, they're still wailing away on each other. And you you feel a hand on your shoulder. And he's in the zone. So he's like, ah, what? what? Uh, Thaven <laughs> wishes to uh, see you. Does he always have to do it while I'm in the middle of my mojo? Where is he at? Uh, he is at the Sleeping Serpent, and he requests that you join him there as quickly as you can. Absolutely. I will be right there, and I'll be like, all right. Why don't you make a perception check? Yeah. That is going to be... 17. Okay. So you notice that this guy is... Um, he is in a, a green robe and underneath the green robe, he's got some scale mail armor on it. And it looks like, um, it's colored to look like serpent patterns. Like under the, the chest part is uh, kind of a tannish, but the shoulders are uh, very clearly like an emerald green with some, mm. some patterning on it. Is it something that would uh, be the, that you could know of, about? Like, is it matching any kind of particular group or sect? Um, you could... Maybe within a history. Do you have a, a history or religion? Okay. I have sure both. I'll, okay. Mm-hmm. I'll do a history, too. Okay. Mine's probably not going to stand up. I got a 25. Okay. So you would think that um, there is definitely some kind of um, snake-worshipping motif. The fact that he comes from the Sleeping Servant is... is so there's a, there's a theme? There's a theme. Um, whether or not he is like a cultist or if, because you knew that this uh, Sleeping Serpent was like a, a gambling hall. Mm-hmm. So it could be that they're fairly dramatic with like, like when you go to Caesar's Palace and you see people dressed up as In Roman. Cent- centurions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whether that's the case or, um, or he is just... Uh, or he is some some type of Dendar the Night Stalker worshiping cultist is remains to be seen. Uh, why don't you make a perception check for me as well? Uh, Fourteen. Okay. So yeah, that's that's all you notice at this point. And um, the uh, the person that grabbed you, he says, "I will be over at the door." Okay. Yeah, I'll be there. As soon as I can, and as soon he doesn't even finish the sentence, he turns around. I was like, "Fuck him up, Jeff!" <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I believe it was a strong draw's turn. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he's gonna reckless attack. Um, he rolls like crap and misses entirely. Oh, no. Like he does a big wind up and then somehow gets turned around. Yeah. When he misses, um, he's got the crimson mask, so he's like having trouble seeing. Yeah, him, yeah, know. it's starting to get clot in his eyes yeah. and stuff. Um, so, what does Jeffrey do? Uh, Jeffrey's gonna go in and take his attack. Uh, his two, because he can still use he a get, bonus for he a He still gets one. a free bonus. Yep, and yep. these are with advantage because yep. he did do reckless. reckless. So a seven and a six. So I'll take the seven. So seven plus five. That's twelve. Twelve. That's twelve. That's, That's not gonna hit. hit. Nope, 13 is what you need. Uh, 12 and a 5. I'll take the 12. Okay. So he'll hit with the second one. Okay. For 4 on the die. Oh, that is what you needed. That is exactly enough to knock uh, Strong Jaw. So this is, this is kind of like a swung and like spun. Yeah. I think a bank statement. <laughs> Jeffro just jumps up, grabs his <laughs> chin, <laughs> and puts both of his knees between and his and shoulder blades pops. and drops back. Yeah, I know, 100%. The backstabber. Yeah. yeah. Pop, and just leaves him on the ground, like pushes up on his head, and <clears throat> and everybody <laughs> just goes insane. <laughs> and so I was like, "Fuck! I know how to pick up." <laughs> the guy that was taking the bets also <laughs> goes insane. He's like, yes. <laughs> um, so uh, everybody is. There's a mixture of. We just lost money, but uh-huh. that was the best thing ever. Yeah. Um, and so it doesn't erupt into like a a riot, a, a riot of violence, but um, everybody is very shocked at, at what happened. And so um, the um, 
the people are just going crazy. Um, it is super easy for you to get a payout because yeah. um, the guy taking bets made a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, so it was 10, 10 to 1? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. I'll just go ahead and add oh, one on. Do you have that in platinum? <laughs> yeah, he does. Oh, good. That makes that a lot easier to carry. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so um, the the remainder of the group, uh, the crowd is is kind of figuring out what the next thing is. They, some people filter out and uh, um, and the messenger is waiting by the door. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and find Craig and be like, we got an appointment to make Oh, this. sure, sure. Yeah, and I'm gonna use the confusion of the crowd to kind of try and slip out with the crowd to the messenger. Okay. Uh, Craig will walk up to Jeffro and be like, have you ever heard of Rumble Tide Ale? Yeah. I give him five platinum. <laughs> He's and suitably like, impressed. Come see me on the island. I'll be your sponsor. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's to get you there in style. Okay. He says, well, if you need me, okay. I'll, I'll be here. Um, I, they said something about defending the championship. So sure. Yeah, sure. I'll be here if you need me. Um, it fights the, the solo game. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. Mm -hmm. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the messenger is leading you through the crowd. There is quite a crowd. It doesn't seem to um, slow down here at night. Yeah. Um, so he leads you probably 20 minutes away um, to the Sleeping Serpent. There is no sign uh, named the Sleeping Serpent, but um, by the door there is a, um, a serpent was sleeping painted on the on the oh, side of the just had a fucking snake sleeping yeah, on the door that's messed full up full on cultists of set <laughs> style <laughs> i would never go in that building like that's a terrible advertisement um so no they have a they have a it's a wooden building uh made of like a rich dark oh, old it looks like old wood um and there's a the painting of a serpent on it um so when you walk in um it is it is fairly busy because it's nighttime at a, a gambling hall. Um, and um, there are uh, a number of tables. Um, there is definitely a high roller table. Um, and there are a number of people similarly dressed to this, mer uh, to this messenger who are um, kind of milling around watching to make sure that no one's cheating um and um he says um the person on the balcony will uh will help you from here All right. and you look up and you see um a woman um mm -hmm. dressed in a emerald um somewhat revealing gown um, and she nods to you as, um, as you walk, uh, as, as kind of you walk in the room and you yeah. have that handoff. Uh, and then she comes downstairs and walks up to you. Can I look around and see if there are other people dressed like him? Yeah. Yeah. Fifteen. Um, so you see a number of things. Okay, so you see that there are similarly dressed individuals here, um, and most of them are not wearing armor. He was actually wearing scale mail. Mm -hmm. um, most of them are wearing some kind of shirt that is similarly patterned. Um, and um, the other things you see, so you notice that there um, there is a... The fragrances in here are interesting. Typically when you go into um, a tavern, it's not, you'll smell like cooked meat or stale ale or fresh ale. Uh, but in here, they have definitely scented the this area with like uh, dark, sweet scents. Um, also, you, you notice along the walls, there are carvings of snakes carved into the walls here. Um, and when um, the individual that is supposed to guide you the rest of the way comes up, you notice um, right away that um, 
she has um, uh, serpent eyes. She has um, the cat's eye yeah. looking yeah. eyes. Oh, so poisonous. Mm -hmm. Probably. I mean, that's half the fun, right? Good to know that she hasn't uh, lost his takes for theatrics. Where are we going? She says, uh, Thaven awaits you in the back room. Mm -hmm. And she leads you through a series of corridors into a room that is very much off the beaten path. You notice um, as you're kind of making your way through the hall area, there are windows and then about uh, almost immediately, there are no, no windows. Um, the, uh, at some point, the wood walls switch to stone walls. Um, and then uh, before you is a lead door um, and then there, the walls appear to also have lead on them as well. Um, she says it prevents scrying. Yeah, he's a paranoid asshole, isn't he? And I'll, I'll do a rap on okay. the door. She opens the door for you, and she, sa uh, she says, uh, Thaven, the, the people you requested are here. And Thaven is, um, when she opens the door, so immediately... On one side of the door, there is a man with like a a thick butcher's cleaver. Uh, the other thing you notice in the room is there is a man naked at the waist with like flowing kind of silk pants on, and he has snakes for arms. Um, and there is a what would look like Gollum if Gollum had sex with the snake that oh. is also in the room and Thaven is chained to a chair and thoroughly beaten up ah fuck and oh, you uh know this? <sighs> no I mean <laughs> whole hallway with no well, I thought we knew I thought it should be in secret to be honest he's always kind of been that way so uh, uh well Thaven... no I mean clearly the <laughs> This was like a trap or something. I thought we were going into the trap on purpose to like find For out style really, points? Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I was just kind of going with it. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I wasn't sure. I mean, yeah. we should work out a signal or something. Something. I would have said something back there. but That's I thought, fair. Yeah, I didn't no. want to ruin your motif. That's you know? fair. I did have a thing going there. We've oh, been yeah, kind of rolling. Oh, yeah, it was like right in. Yeah, it was yeah. really good. So, uh, <laughs> Thaven says, sorry, kid. Come on in. They just want to talk. I... Yeah, they always just want to talk. And he'll kind of go through. And he'll make a point to like kind of get... Semi close to the person with no shirt. Okay. And the snake arms, and the, I, but I'll let him like do the. Yeah. And I'll see there. I'm like, so you're not here to kill me yet. So that's a good sign. <laughs> but they will. <laughs> Rock you. <laughs> <laughs> little dodgeball for you there. So, um, so the the guy with the meat cleaver, he's uh -huh. like, no, we don't want to kill you. You, you're useful to us, and your friend here has racked up quite a bit of debt. Oh. And um, debt this is where this is where the debt gets paid off. See, mm. that's that's way different. No. I, I wouldn't have called debt. I was thinking I didn't something think else. Was something thinking, much sneakier. Yeah. 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 Obviously. Yeah. Debt seems ob obviously to be because I'll turn to Thaim and I'll be like, I'm a little disappointed that it was just debt. No, so am I. <laughs> yeah, we're both pretty disappointed. <laughs> he shrugs sheepishly. Um, and uh, so... What the, uh, the, the guy with the meat cleaver says is uh, that he had been at the tables um, and luck didn't go his way. Mm. And so he, he owes uh, 20,000 gold pieces. And he can either pay the 20,000 gold pieces, mm -hmm. which is due today, mm, of course. or he can, um, he can do a job for us. And um, that will relieve his debt. Huh. Twenty thousand gold, gold pieces. pieces. Like, how really? Do you even do, how do you even get to twenty thousand gold pieces? David's like, he pretty much summed it up. Luck didn't go my way. <laughs> that's not luck. That's, that's like that's a streak. Base mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest with you, and you should have learned this when we were together. Uh, I do this for a living, and that's just a game. Like, uh, good job on them. They're running you well. No, geez. you're you're running a top notch. Yeah, no, thing really. Here if you got this guy in for twenty grand, out, that's oof, Yeah, no, I think we. Can I both dream say, of that. I yeah. think we can both say that we're appreciative <laughs> of your. Of your game. Of your hustle. Yeah, really. absolutely. Yeah. Good, your good. Hustle. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The Thank snake you. arms, a little creepy, but 
a little bit much. Oh, the snake god blesses us all. Oh, sure, I can see that. Snake sure. god. <laughs> and this is not hidden in any way. No, I, this, this is, is right out. Way out. Yeah. So, drop. Some sort of job? So, job, yes. Um, the, uh, the woman that, that led you here, she says, um, uh, Volgar, or Volgrum, can we make it vulgar? No, it's not vulgar. <laughs> Come on. I'm sorry. This I is love a, that fucking guy. <laughs> this is this is an actual character. Okay. okay. So, uh, Vulgrum the Mighty uh, has an artifact that uh, we would like to have. Um, we have a buyer in mind, mm. and we would like to have it. It is called the Hor uh, the Horn of the Merfolk. And um, we would like for you to steal it from him. I don't I mean, have a problem with that. That I seems mean, like it. Smells a little fishy. <laughs> <They're laughs> smurf. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, um, being a pirate, mm -hmm. and I'm going to let you roll a history check. Um, okay. It wouldn't be one that uh, necessarily Craig would know, just right offhand. Uh, that is going to be a 16. 16. So um, you've heard of uh, Vergrum before. Um, he's a pirate captain mm. um, on the um, on the council of the the Blood Ring Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. So um, this is not this is no this is no small timer. No, no. This, is, yeah. this is twenty thousand gold. Yeah, twenty thousand gold. Yeah, this yeah. is this is some seriousness. Um, and um, Thaven says, listen, I've told them that this is going to be very difficult, um, but I think we can pull it off. Um, we just need a couple of days to yeah. plan it out, and um, we will be able to take care of it for, for them. Sure. Uh, while he's telling you this, Zago's kind of trying to look in his eyes, and he's trying to get a sense of, are we really stealing this, or are we fucking these people up? That is, that's only a uh, 12. A 12. Yeah. Um, it's hard to read. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably because kind of his eyes thing. are swollen. Yeah, one, <laughs> one eye is, is very much swollen. Um, so when it appears as though you are willing to work mm -hmm. for, uh, for them, um, the... No. Before we get into the specifics, uh -huh. can we just... Can we all come to an understanding that this is us mm -hmm. attempting to help alleviate his debt? No. We are not assuming, assuming his debt. No. If this doesn't yes. work out, we're going to bring him back here and your meat cleaver guy is going to have to do something to get so, your 20,000 gold. Uh, meat cleaver says, oh, if, if you are not able to take care of it, there is no... There's no um, debt that you will be assuming. No, you're that, correct with okay. that. We, we agree to that. We just, we um, just wanted to make sure that was clear before what, we started what doing What will this. happen to Thaven is he will become like this one. And he points to the lizard golem looking oh, thing. Okay. Um, I figured you didn't choose that one from the snake god, to be honest. Mm. He will become like him. Okay. If he lives. Oh, okay. Mm. That's fine. Yeah. That's and funny. then he will serve Dendar. That's sure. Whatever Dendar. you think. I like hanging out here. For once, I'm not the weird one in the room. So I'm kind of. <laughs> that's fair. I'm having Actually, a blast. No, you're. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, so to be fair, they're the majority. So you, yeah. you're still. Yeah. I'm Me, still minority. Meat cleaver and snake arms. They, they once there's an agreement, an accord made. Um, they say um, you will have one of these two to watch over you to make sure that things. Um, there is no uh, back dealing. Oh, yeah. There. Oh, that's fine. Um, and uh, we will allow you the services of Thaven. Oh, fantastic. Oh, then, yeah. That's good. Well, I was kind of assuming that because, you know, it's his debt. Yes. You know, he should probably be working So you, at this point, you'll get a choice between the um, the pure, pure blood you want to or um, the brood guard you want to. Mm. Mm. Uh, does the Mr. Th Arms over there, uh, does, are, do you have a way of... Not having snake arms out? Nope. 
No. Nope. Oh, no, the Broodguard is the uh, golem-looking dude, and then the Pureblood is the woman that led you here. Oh, okay. Yeah. What kind of skill sets do you guys have? So um, I will tell you, as they kind of explain, um, that the Pureblood is more sneaky, and okay. the um, the Broodguard is more protecty. I say we go for sneaky if we're going into some place. I'm always down. Yeah. Plus, I mean, so far, this is a sausage party. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I'm also a little bit more interested in the pure money. You don't know if the if the um, golem looking uh, brood guard is male or female. He's probably got a cloaca. That's like nature's glory hole. That's, That's right. Fine. That's right. But mm-hmm. we're going to go with the snake eye lady. Yeah. You're snake going with uh, Sakesh? Whoa, whoa, okay. whoa, whoa, whoa. Snake eye lady. So Sakesh um, oh, is the only one that stays in the room lady. with you guys. Um, and uh, the rest of them leave. Well, it was uh, nice meeting y'all. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Yeah. Good. Good luck with the next, snake arm thing. Next time you're in them. town, why don't you try your hand at our tables? No. No. no you seem good at your job. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was probably gonna throw a couple platinum on the table as we walked out, just because. I mean, it's free. <laughs> I mean, sure. I mean, I did do. Oh my god, you should have been there. I, Oh, the yeah, fire ring. Yeah, <laughs> that was essentially. First. Oh man! Anyway. Oh, the fair one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how you drink that swill, by the way. Um, <laughs> so uh, they leave, and Sakesh um, just kind of silently observes the conversation between. Um, how are you doing there, buddy? Faven? He's rough. Yeah. He's like, oh, you know, they they wailed on me for quite a bit. Yeah. Um, he's like, actually, I. Could use a drink. Sakesh, would you mind going out and getting me a drink? And she, he's gonna, why don't you make a a persuasion check? Yeah. With a persuasion check? Yeah. Oh, for him? For him. Well, he's he's been beat up for a while. That's Uh true. Which would probably explain the natural one that was just really. Oh, natural one. Okay. And he has a. Only a plus three. So she says no. Uh, and that's when Vizag will be like, it's been a while for you, buddy. I get it. And I go, listen, dear, it, it just he's not going to be able to steal this thing right if he's out of sorts. Can you just help us out here? And I'll make the persuasion check. Okay. Uh, that's going to be... Why can I have a fine persuasion on the center? There it is. Uh, that's going to be... 22. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she, so she she nods and yeah. she leaves. Um, and you see that the brood guard is standing outside the door so that you can't just yeah. sneak out. Um, and as soon as the door closes again, he's like, okay. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> so here's the thing. Were you already in debt before you sent me the message? I, the debt is, is, was created because I need a cover to go in and steal what I want from Vrogrom. Um, and so I I created plausible deniability here that, look, we're being blackmailed into this. Um, Makes more sense. I mean, why not screw over the serpent worshippers? Yeah. No, I, no I'm, I'm following this train of thought, to be honest. You're wrong. Yeah, I'm a crazy person. Whatever. So he says, um, he says, I... I wanted to get into debt so that I could go in and, and steal this uh, this thing. I'm say. actually looking for something else. I'm looking for uh, the armor of the eel, um, which Vulgrim also has. Um, he had it. Um, I was looking for it when it came into town, and he was able to get it from me and put it in his or get it before I could obtain it and put it in his vault. Um, which happens to also have the horn of the mer- merfolk in it. So hmm. it just so happens that we can, if we make good with the the Iwanti, then ideally my debt is repaid, I'm in good standing with them, and we get what we want. I was about to say, I've played cards with you before. You're not that bad. No. No, not yeah. at all. No. Um, and you notice that uh, as hurt as he was, yeah. he is, a lot yeah. of that was performance. Yeah. So. All and right. then he casts a cure, cure wounds. Yeah, <laughs> so, so do you have an idea of how to get in there? Um, 
unfortunately, that's something that we're going to have to work out. Um, so uh, I think we can bargain with them for a couple of days to kind of sort this all out. Um, and then we'll make it in there and we'll, we'll do the thing. All right, but after this, we're square. We're square? Square. I don't owe you anything after this. Well, that's disappointing. That's how it is. <laughs> I mean, if you want, I could let snake arms back in. I mean, snake no, arms. No, no, like snake arms is. You know, those are poisonous, those snake arms that he has. I was hoping you would bite me with them. Give me an excuse to get out of this stupid plan you have. <laughs> 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 so at this point, uh, Sakesh comes back in, and he puts on the uh, Thaven puts on the hurt face again, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, Sakesh hands him the water. And um, what do you guys, what are you guys gonna do at this point? All right, well, well, we need to find out the we layout. We need to clean this guy out, uh-huh. uh, and then we need to start looking at what kind of information we can get about Fulgrim. Yeah, mm-hmm. and his vault, and his house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, so getting out of here is no trouble um, because there's four of you, and Sakesh joins you, mm-hmm. and she says um, that that the Yuanti have agreed to three days. You have three days to obtain that. Otherwise, he becomes like six, and she points to six. Yeah, yeah. The, you keep pointing at it. I understand the six situation. And six is six. Oh god, and he does that too. Six. That's <laughs> that's great. That's uh, I'm sure you guys love rolling sixes. So. Yes, yes. <laughs> as we uh, as we walk through mm-hmm. the gambling hall, mm-hmm. gonna look for a game. I'm hoping to find something like roulette. Yeah, something like yeah, that where I can bet like, like red black. Sure. And I'm gonna put five platinum on black. Okay. And the the thing spins, and uh, odds is uh, red, and evens is black. Odds is red. Okay. So um, the um, the person manning the table says the night serpent thanks you for your donation. Hold on, that's, that's not even hiding it. No, they're just outward with the cultish thing. Are you really so outward with the cultish <laughs> thing? Is that like a is that okay here? Uh, you know, it's not it's not not okay. Put five more on black. Okay, that's odd. That's even. Okay. I'm starting to, and I, I'll turn, I'll be like, starting to see how maybe you lost so much gold at this place. <laughs> I just got all my money back. He did. He, he, he just got just rolling. wrong on one and right wrong on the on other. Yeah. Um, yeah. Standard. Yeah. yeah. Sakesh so says, Sakesh so says, the interesting thing about pirates is they don't really care who you worship. Huh. It's true. I That's, have yet to meet someone who gives a shit. Also, could care less who people worship. Yeah. Uh, but that's me. They, uh, what about me, Moradin, the strength of Moradin and your people? I mean, listen. He created you from stone. I I got right with Moradin. Oh. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't mean I push it on other people. Oh. Yeah. I'm a dwarf of slightly loose moral standings. <laughs> I mean, I don't even owe Thaven anything. I just think this is fun. Yeah. Oh, by the way, sorry about that. I'll totally tell people you don't owe me anything afterwards. But uh, you should have seen the way he reacted. I told him the one with the beard. <laughs> we literally all have beards. I know. <laughs> You're the worst. <laughs> um, and Muzaka's just so happy because he's been holding that in for like oh, like two or days. <laughs> nice. They were so confused. So confused. <laughs> so. Um, so Thaven is staying at a, a boarding house um, near the docks. Um, he is paid for a private room, um, and he leads you guys back to it. Um, he um, basically says, "We can rest here for the night. I would appreciate resting because you know the face, the, the face, face, and the mm-hmm. the punches and, and stuff, the owls." Yeah. Mm. Um, if you guys wanted to do some reconnoitering before the night passes, you can feel free to do so. Um, uh, um, 
What's the nearest inn from here? We've hit the Fairwind and we've hit the Serpent, Sleeping Serpent. So the other tavern in town is the Powder Keg. Powder Keg. And was that the kind of more piratey low class That is one? the uh, the low class one, for sure. Well, I know what I'm doing tonight. Uh, You're going to go to the Powder Keg? I'm going to go to the Powder Keg. And uh, maybe I'll find out more about this pirate captain that we're apparently ripping off for two magical items. Because apparently that's what we're in the business of doing now. Fucking elves. And he, he's, what other buildings are in town? What other... I mean, it's a it's a large town, right? Large. So what are we talking about? Is it mainly houses? Is it just the inns? Uh, so, mo- it's, so near the docks, it's mostly boarding houses. There is a residential district that has more permanent residents, like merchants and stuff that actually have houses here. Um, there is a fortress, um, and I'm thinking like, um, like Black Sails mm-hmm. has the, the fort. Yeah, the top. fort. Um, we're not a whole lot of people are, but if need be, they can, they, go, they there. can go there. Um, there is also the Dragon Beach, which is, um, named for a clutch of dragon turtles that, um, reside there. Um, and the pirates have made friends with them so that they help defend against uh, invading ships. Um, and there is, in the residential district, there is a high-end residential district where the like pirate captains who hold power okay. stay. Uh, and it's not difficult to... Um, gather that that's where Vorkram's home is. So, But there's also, you know, there's things that you would find in every fantasy city of a number of size, like Smith and uh, Tannery and that kind of thing. Um, is there a dwarf presence? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, can I look for the dwarfs? Sure. Can I, can I like, find, like, oh, maybe yeah. if there's, like, a... Little dwarf town inside. <laughs> <laughs> it's a me, dwarf town. Hey, welcome hey. to a dwarf town. There's man. sausages did dwarves everywhere. Become and... antichors. Uh, that's <laughs> weird. <laughs> welcome to dwarf a town decor. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's definitely a, a little dwarf town. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want to go there and see if I can look for the fancier houses. Mm-hmm. What are they built out of? Um, a mixture of stone and Tudor. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to look to Usually see stone first floor, if so. I can find, if my people are here, probably masons. Yeah. Yeah, there's like definitely that. masons here. I want to, um, I'm going to say that I'm here with the, with the blessings of my clan. Okay. We're looking at possibly expanding to start another brewery. Okay. And I want to see what kind of stonework we can do. I'm also interested in the layout of the uh, the ground, you okay. know, the, the foundations of this town. Okay. If it's on straight stone, if it's, you know, what kind of materials it's underneath. Because, you know, of course, we'd have to build something down to store things. Yeah. Um, basically use that as a cover to maybe let them, have them let me look at some paperwork and whatnot, sure. uh, to do an investigation check to start getting some idea of what we're looking at as far as how buildings are put together, that kind of thing. If I happen to find anything about a special order for a vault, of course, that would be fantastic. Um, but, why and, don't you make a persuasion check? Oh, sure. And if you're willing to offer coin, you can have advantage on the Oh, persuasion well, of course. Check. The okay. Rumble Tide clan spreads the wealth. Of course. 16. Okay. So they're, um, they're definitely interested in doing business. Um, they are... They say, we've, you know, we've done many of the houses in the nicer areas. Um, and they show you some manners. Um, one is uh, for for captain. This is the uh, Mara, Mara Fair Winds Manor. Um, there, uh, they go through a couple of different um, pirate captains that 
don't mean anything to you. Mm -hmm. And then they get to Volgrums. Oh. And Volgrums, the first thing you notice about Volgrums is um, it is massive. Um, and not only massive in that it's a large estate, but that it is like the dimensions seem wrong to you. As a dwarf, you're like, that doesn't seem quite right. Um, and they say, no, no, uh, we designed it to his specifications. Um, and there is, um, there is kind of, they go through some of the plans and then they say that the, the, the lowest floor is private. It, we, we can't share it with anybody. Oh, well, that's, I understand that. Is it below ground? Yes. Okay. Yeah. How many levels below ground? Um, it's, it's the only level, but it is deep. It is like okay. 60 feet. What is the, the strata here? Like what is the, the foundation of the ground? What's uh, the makeup it's, of it? It's rocky. Okay. Um, I'm thinking something like Ireland where it, uh, farming would be difficult here because it's, the ground is so, um, stony. Are there any natural caverns? Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. There are natural caverns here. Do they have those mapped out at all? Cause we, yeah, that absolutely. would be where we would prefer. To, sure. And I'll just give a quick perusal to see if there's anything near there. Okay. Uh, so there is, um, there is some cave structures close by. Um, they say that ideally the dwarves probably wouldn't want to be there because of the dragon turtles. That's their like nesting ground and gotcha. further back. Um, so in, in and out of the caves is going to be difficult, they say. Um, but yeah, they, there is caverns close by okay. if, if you wanted to go that route. Fantastic. Do they have maps of the caverns at all? Have they explored they would, them? Yeah, they would have some maps. They're um, they're not super detailed. Mm -hmm. Again, the dragon turtles. Yeah. So, they, but they do have kind of a rough idea of where they go. Okay. And the dragon turtles say no go there. Uh, it's kind of their home breeding ground kind of area. So, um, and for the most part, the pirates leave the dragon turtles to the beach and that that area entirely. And there's some caves that lead back into it okay. and um no one really knows how deep the turtles go into it but because the the cave's uh mouth is is near the the beach um it's a it's a difficult proposition they say gotcha. um i'll try to make some notes of the house and the the structure of it okay kind of, you know how sprawling it is and everything sure. like that and then i will just i'll go past it okay and start looking at other things, looking mm -hmm. at things more attuned to brewery. Okay, cool. So that's how I'll spend my night. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am headed towards the powder keg, and essentially what I want to do is try to come in, start dropping some coin and buying drinks, and see if I can find any of the crew members of uh, people who have served with them, people who know them, maybe someone who works with them, and try to get info that way by gathering people. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um... So you want to make an investigation check, or is there... Uh, could I do it with persuasion if I'm talking people up? Sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, that is going to be... Persuasion is going to be 26. Okay. So you find uh, one... So the, the powder keg, just to give you an idea, mm -hmm. it is... Um, the first thing you notice about the powder keg is the sawdust on the floor. Uh, second fat thing is that uh, most of the regulars are bare scars or missing teeth. Mm. Um, and um, it looks like a night without a fight here is, is a wasted night. Yeah, no. Um, it's in my crowd. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the sawdust helps to clean up the blood. Nice. Um, so you, as you're chatting some people up, yeah. uh, you definitely find... Uh, people who serve on one of Volgrim's ships. Mm -hmm. um, and they are happy to talk about how fantastic it is to be a pirate under Volgrim's banner um, because of all the respect that they get. Mm. It's, a, it's a cushy gig? Uh, it's not necessarily a cushy gig, but um, 
there is the threat of violence that comes with Volgrim that you get um, most ships surrender fairly easily. Uh, just lob a couple of catapult uh, blasts at them, or Volgrim throws the 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 stones himself. And uh, really, yeah. Wow, big dude. Yeah, big yeah. dude. Do you not? Do you... Oh, well, I know, but uh, that's quite something if he's just throwing stones everywhere. Well, he's average for his kind. Yeah. But um, he's he's very big. Hmm. So. I mean, a guy like that, big deal around here. Like, am I able to see his house? It's probably the biggest one, right? And that's oh, like definitely. Yeah. They, they, you, you wouldn't be able to see it from here because yeah. it's so far away. But if you go to uh, the residential district, it is the only house that you can see from the edge of the residential district. Man, have you ever been inside? Uh, no, we have not had the pleasure of being invited to Volgrim. Oh, Aw, come house. on. Uh, you guys seem like good crew members. I mean, wh who's better than you? Who who gets to go inside Volgrim's house? Other than my mates here. Uh, <laughs> why don't you make a persuasion? Yeah, absolutely. You're buttering them up. Yeah. Oh. Luckily, I have a high persuasion, but it doesn't help with that roll. Uh, that is going to be a uh, not... No, I'm sorry. A uh, 10. A ten. Uh, it's good enough. They've they've had some drinks. They they say you know we're we're not even command crew on his ship. We're on one of uh, the other ships. Um, so typically uh, he only invites other captains of his stature um, and his his captains themselves. So mm. yeah, welcome. And I'll buy another round for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, any, anything you want to get into here while you're, while you're here? I mean, you know, he's like, well, I put on the, uh, Visago's thinking is I put on the party facade for sure. a job, but then it quickly decides into, well, I mean, I'm already doing it, so I might as well just keep going. So he's just going to drink the drink. night away. Yeah. Um, now there is, uh, there is two walls in this place that look like they're heavily, um, what's the word? Pocked, um, and you notice that around these walls mm -hmm. there are circles drawn. Um, and oh, is this like darts? Yeah, yeah. I'll uh, they have a pirate dart set up here. I'll, I'll sit there and I'm like, oh, <laughs> and I'll look around and be like, you guys play? <laughs> oh, yeah, every night. Who, uh, who's who's playing right now? Like, who's who's the big. Who, uh, who's got the highest tab going right now? Uh, Jeb over there is uh, the, the champion. One-eyed Jeb? <laughs> oh. uh, can I... Can One-eyed, I... half-nosed Jeb? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I get a look at Jeb and see what I feel about Jeb sure. about the investigation? Sure, absolutely. Why don't you roll an insight? Insight? Is, okay. Yeah. Oof, no. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, that's a three, because I rolled a one. Um... So I'm going to use a reference that you may not know, but your dad definitely will. Are you uh, familiar with Edward James Olmos? No? Okay. He looks like that. He's um, Basically, he looks like he has the worst acne scars in the world. Ooh. Uh, but it's not... From from the activities that he's involved in, it's yeah. not acne scars. Mm, yeah. It's a lot of just... Uh, he has punctured. a lot of daggers thrown at him. <laughs> punctured yeah. scars, but he's still up and uh, up and around, and he definitely does have. A, he is missing an eye, and uh, part of his nose is gone too. So um, he looks like he's he's done some business. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll go over to him and be like, "They tell me you're the guy to talk to for pirate darts." He sets down his drink, and he's like. Absolutely, I am. Well, then I say we get a good round going. But first off, one more round for over here. <laughs> Everybody cheers. Yeah. One more <laughs> round. And uh, I'll actually, I'll, I'll try to make, I'm going to make a slight of hand check. I'm not going to drink as much as I'm mm, feeding him. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would be, oh, fuck, these dice have turned tonight. Uh, that's going to be, it's only going to be an eight to try and pour some of it out, kind of over-exaggeredly, but... Okay. 
No one's really paying attention to you at this All point. All right, cool. Um, so we're going to do this because we're it's getting fairly late in the episode. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do this in a one-round contest. Absolutely. High roll wins. So All this right. is going to be... Dexterity, right? Dexterity. Yeah. And you have got to beat a 14, my friend. What about a natural 20 with a plus three to the dexterity? Oh, you might have just killed Jeb. <laughs> 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 so he falls Jet and everybody's down. like yeah! yeah and uh then he doesn't get back up so they start like yeah <laughs> tending to his wounds um so one there. one guy here is trained in medicine so. oh well that's good you always gotta have one right? <laughs> uh, i'll sit there i'll be like yeah and it very quickly turns like yeah what a good get fuck jab get another round <laughs> <laughs> So at this point, um, it's getting late in the evening. Uh, you guys can return, and then the next day, um, how do you want to start this? Uh, <laughs> I come in with paper. Yeah. Uh -huh. and I've got like a pencil uh -huh. in my hand, and I'm like, I just don't get it. They must have recorded it wrong, or it's like you take three steps for every step. That. Who signed off on it? I can't remember. The blueprints for this guy's house are stupid. And that's when I, I'll, I'll like come in and he's like, <laughs> I am the winner of Pirate Darts. <laughs> Fuck Jeb. Also, apparently only very important people get to talk to his house. That's what I found out. I mean, I don't think he did any better than that. And then I'll like start kind of curling in a corner somewhere like, ah. Good day's work. And I see he has blueprints. I'm like, how did you get blueprints? I went and talked to the dwarves. <laughs> They're a dwarf. They're dwarves here? There's a whole, like, <laughs> small little enclave of them. Gonna be honest, barely met any dwarf that was on a pirate ship here. I avoid that part. Of, where is that? I'm really <laughs> offended by how you view my people. That's fair. But these plans are all wrong, and I'll lay them out. <laughs> and so we'll start going over them. I'm assuming at some point we, we figure out. Converse. That, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's a giant. Yeah. yeah. A giant. And then I look at... David. David's like, yeah, he's a fire giant. Did I not mention that? Is that why he put the armor in his vault? Yeah. Because he can't wear it. Right. Also, it's, um, it's leather armor, and he's not interested in that so who buys this leather guy? armor and never wears it i don't know i mean maybe it looks nice <laughs> it really it, ties his vault together oh yeah well, i guess i've never been a vault guy myself so oh, i don't understand well, you would need money I, I i have money and then it's and he stares at the empty cup he was holding gone <laughs> <laughs> it's always gone <laughs> all right um so I've got a rough layout mm -hmm. yeah. of of his place, and now that I understand the scale, right? I now understand that it is in fact three steps Six. to every one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, also there all are some caverns that run underneath the town, but uh, they start over at the Dragon Turtle Den. So, uh, there's that. Uh, well, dealing with dragon turtles, they've been says uh, just costs too money. Yeah, because they are dragons first. Um, turtle second. Turtle second. Do you yeah. think we could get in from the cavern? Uh, no one knows. Oh. Yeah, um, that's, that's the. Yeah. We could also go to he the. Right. Does have a level underneath the house that's fairly deep. Yeah. That the dwarves aren't allowed to talk about. Hmm. We could try going to the residential district just to check out the front end. I don't think we're going in that way, but just to see if we need to get out that way. Uh. What's the female Yanti? Uh, Sakesh. Sakesh? Mm hmm. What do they do for street sweepers in that area? Um, they would employ street sweepers. Do they have a, uh, like a uniform? Something yes. to. Can you get us some of those? Yes. Okay. Thinking we go by, I do a little identify. See if we sure. can pick up any magic right off the gate. I imagine he probably has something there. He spends enough money. 
it's kind of well. Dope. The fact that he's a giant and um, the dwarves are dealing with him means that he spends money. Yeah, because the dwarves are not yeah. super super fans. Super fond of. Giants. I'll look for magic. Yep. You look for traps. Yep, it's a thing. Sounds good. Davin's going to. Uh, Davin is willing to do whatever you want him to do at this point. So you said he gets he has his he has captains up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think you can get in contact with any of the captains? You're pretty good at this. I stuff. can try to. See if you can. Most of his captains are going to be loyal to him, though. Yeah. Sure. It's not so much that we have to turn one of them, though. But if we can get in for a company showing or a show of good faith, that'll give us another angle we can look at. Worth looking we, into. We can certainly try. Yeah. Um. So at this point, we'll I'll do an explanation of what the grounds look like and then we'll kind of we'll break and we can plan this out the next session oh okay, cool so you go into the residential district um and his house um is a keep um and it is full stone um it has a retaining wall a huge um plot of um it's kind of like uh in Arizona, where they have yards, but they're yards of like rock. Mm -hmm. um, so he has that mesa looking type landscape uh, because fire giants not so fond of the foliage. Um, so it is just basically stony beach up to the Keep Manor. Um, it is massive and it can be seen from the edge of the residential district. Um, you notice that there are multiple teams of guards patrolling around. Um, they are not giants. They're um, mostly humans or some version of a humanoid. Um, as well as um, groundskeepers and, and that kind of thing. Um, servants. And there are a, a few buildings on the, on the property. Um, aside from the main one, they appear to be like stables and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, I'm assuming you're detecting magic mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, the gate does appear to be magically fortified. Um, there are faint hints of magic around, just kind of around the grounds itself, um, that seem to be kind of like a anti- um, like don't fuck with us type thing. Um, and, um, as you guys are walking through, you don't sp specifically spot traps, but that's probably more because they are focused, outwardly focused on a, um, strong guard presence. Mm -hmm. Um, and traps in a residential area probably wouldn't work out so well. Keep you never know what's <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, so that's what you see. Um, and then next week we will uh, we'll figure out a, a few more details about the property based on your roles, and um, you can guys can plan on how you're going to do pull off this heist. Is Steven a walk expert? Uh, he is a College of Whispers bard, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and he is a criminal, so he does yeah. have lock picks and that kind of stuff. Cool. Uh, proficiency. Cool. So. cool. All right. All right. Thanks, cool. everybody, for joining us. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this, and we will continue on with it.